uh, this government stuff, state government, telling private businesses what to do about COVID is no bueno. <laughs> uh, it's not good in California. It's not good in Texas. And I uh, could imagine a virus that necessitated federal state level mandates at private business. Mm -hmm. It's not that I have a hard set principle, which is the government cannot uh, infringe on the private businesses, whatever. Like I could imagine the bubonic plague and there's a resistance against people dealing with it. We go, okay, we need to, we need to do something. But for COVID, uh, I, I cannot, I guess, believe, is that the right word? That no, you could, no, no, you should believe in COVID. It's no, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm uh, stunned and shocked that, that mandating that public officials do something or don't do something and mandating that this occur at a certain time and in public schools. But, but to go into a private business, a private gym, and say, well, let me, you have to check people's vaccines or you cannot check people's vaccines is like, who wants their government making that choice, not knowing which side they're going to land on. So I think that's interesting because, and I don't disagree, but there's a piece of news that I had found that I was going to bring up that is kind of contradictory to that. I'm curious how you, sure. how you square the two. France is banning plastic packaging for most fruits and vegetables. So you cannot individually wrap an apple anymore. Uh, you can't like pre-slice an orange and then put it in a plastic package with a plastic seal and type inside of a yeah. cardboard box. I think that's great. Uh, I like the idea of it, we've talked before about how often people will claim that they want something like higher pay for Amazon workers, but then don't boycott Amazon. And sometimes the answer is actually just to have the government demand Amazon pay its workers more and have prices increase and people stomach the increase. So you're saying raise the minimum wage, basically? Yeah, for the Amazon. Well, no, sorry. I'm saying that people... Not, I'm, I don't know anything about it to know actually how I feel about it, but that there's a lot of people who claim that Amazon's workers are mistreated and underpaid. And if you raise that the minimum wage- They want yeah. those people to make more money, but not enough to stop shopping at Amazon to force it with their behavior. Mm -hmm. But if the government were to intervene and make them pay more higher prices because it would get passed through to them, they would think it was a good thing net, even though they were paying more. But if there was another company that didn't have that rule, they would start shopping there. So the government has to raise that on everybody evenly because people individually will just flow towards the cheapest product that right. gets delivered the in fastest the, with the hardest worked workers. In, in the same way, I would say, let's say that French people, when you survey them, say they yeah. want plastics gone. Not to be in, I like think they don't want to take a fruit like an apple that is already self contained or an orange that's already self contained, have it chopped up and then put into a plastic cup into a cardboard box. They don't like it, mm -hmm. but they buy it for their kids because it's easy and they're, they're just not thoughtful or necessarily even moral in their day to day. But when the law passes, they approve of the law. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be times where people support the government telling private businesses what, what to, to do. do. This is the same way we got rid of child labor in the US. That is the government telling companies what they can't do because otherwise people clearly will still buy Nike. They actually don't stop buying things even though they don't like child labor. So I'm curious, COVID is obviously a distinct and polarizing issue, but when is it okay for a government to tell a private business what to do? Because sometimes we think it's great. Yeah. And when is it inappropriate? Yeah, I don't know. And it's worth thinking about. Do I have principles of like, okay, 50% of the population is in danger up to a degree that could take seven to 10 years well, off even, their life Let's say on child average. labor. No children will die. I guarantee yeah. you, no children will die. Yeah. But we're going to let anyone who's over five work if their parents will volunteer them and they're willing to, mm -hmm. and they do not get a minimum wage because they're under 18. Yeah. Do we want that law in the US? Well, I, I am not a libertarian in the sense that like I... My goal is not for the smallest government possible, let people do what's possible, exactly for these reasons. Right, right. So what I'm saying is interesting is COVID is so divisive, but there isn't, we don't uniformly believe that government shouldn't tell private businesses no, what no, to do. I, we I, actually like sometimes when the government this forces is, their ethics on corporations. Yeah, this is the art of government. I think this is the hard part is that I don't know that I could draw an effective scientific line on where government ought to and where they oughtn't get involved. And I actually think as... Uh, culture changes, that line needs to move. Because I don't think that the government in uh, Rome or the 1700s should have said no child over under the age of 16 or something can work. I think, you know what I mean? So like that needs to develop 
over time. And if we were in a world where we had cured death basically of every other cause and COVID existed, I might be for vaccine passports being mandated, Mm -hmm. but that's just not the world we live in. People die all the time of a hundred different things and we don't check their vaccines at these private sorts of, so my comment that we shouldn't mandate or block checking passports, uh, vaccine passports in private businesses is relative to our current culture and our current, you know, rate of death for as, as other things. It's, it's a very particular claim. So, uh, how do I come to that? I mean, I don't want them checking for my flu vaccine. I suppose I would want them checking for the bubonic plague vaccine mm-hmm. <laughs> and COVID to me, given my understanding of the deaths and, and how it affects people and the ability to mitigate risk with Max and the fact that you can have a vaccine if you so choose and be in a private business or not go out if you are threatened by it, uh, makes it fall on the other line. And I don't know that I can come up, I can come up with broad reasons, but I can't draw that line for you perfectly. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the, and this is the, that is informed by your, the weird thing is we can't agree on how big a deal COVID is. And that, that belief is informed by your belief about how big a deal COVID is. Which is and but I, certainly if you were one of the people that thought that mm-hmm. this was a microchip designed to make you infertile yeah. so that we could control overpopulation, you would be absolutely yeah, yeah. adamant that the government do what Texas is doing. And if you thought that this was the leading cause of death in the U.S. and will continue to be for well, years, actually, we don't if, get Even it. if I thought it was a microchip, I don't think I'd want... Uh, I, like you, I still think people in private businesses can check for microchips. It's not checking, want. just to be clear. It's mandating. They're, they're saying that you can't man. Texas didn't say you can't. Oh, check. no, no. They like if, you, if I have a gym and I'm a gym owner and I want everyone who comes into my gym to have a government injected chip. What Texas said was you, you cannot can't do that. require your employees to get the vaccine. Oh, it's employees. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was even thinking. No, what, no, what what they is said it not is, towards? Is it? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I might have misunderstood this. Is it not for patrons as well? I mean, maybe they're I thought it was for patrons. Things. I the, thought it was for patrons. No, the thing, the thing they, so the government said, I might have misunderstood. The federal government said, maybe I got it wrong. The federal government said that we are going to demand that people that work at federal agencies have vaccines. Correct. And the Texas government said no. And they tried to pass a state law that would make it so that people didn't have to get the vaccine to keep their job. And for private businesses as well. Yes, that you can't mandate your employees get vaccinated. Yes. 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 Um, yeah, I'm not sure that they're saying, they're saying it is illegal to demand that your employees get a vaccine or else be fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The employment and the employment thing adds another wrench into it because obviously, uh, selecting where to work out, where to eat food is, is one level of, uh, inconvenience and disruption to one's life and getting a new job (laughs) is, is at a different level. So I'd have to think personally about where, how that, how that, I could be wrong. That's the, that's the one I saw at least. Mm -hmm. Um, but you had said something that, that I wanted to respond to. I can't remember, unfortunately. Um, oh, it was the, to your earlier point about how we can't agree on how serious it is. This is because no one is doing, or very few, no, this is the human brain. It's not, we don't do statistics. We do, uh, how frequent do I hear anecdotes? And mm-hmm. when the news becomes, you know, you, you know, someone that is close to you that watches a ton of news and is convinced that the only, essentially the only thing that kills people is COVID and has never expressed the sort of uh, reluctance to engage in semi-risky activity. But when it comes to COVID, masks, vaccines, can't go to public places, can't do anything uh, that is totally out of proportion with the risk that they'd be willing to take in terms of like eating red meat. (laughs) I, I know people who will, even though they're vaccinated, and everyone going is also vaccinated, won't go in a room with someone if they've been to a event mm-hmm. that demanded a vaccine card. So just to make that, so like I go to a conference, everyone there's vaccinated, but there's a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. And then I go to hang out with this person. They'll say, no, even though I'm vaccinated, they're vaccinated. Everyone I was with is vaccinated mm-hmm. because of the potential for a Delta variant. If we went to dinner and I had three drinks over the course of two hours and then offered to drive, like I drove there and then was driving back, they wouldn't get an Uber. They'd just get in my car while <laughs> yeah, I was three drinks yeah, in. Yeah. So, like, so yes, that, just to illustrate the point, like it's, it's not that they're making sure that their chance of death is zero for everything. Yes. But they want to make sure there's a 0% chance they die of COVID. Mm-hmm. But they'll die in a drunk driving accident with me if I'm four drinks in. Yeah, it's which I don't up, do, by the way, because yeah. I don't drink and drive. Um, so, yeah, so that and that's that's the other problem is that 
What we're not acknowledging collectively is that we're not reducing the risk of death. We're not doing this. We're reacting to very particular stimuli on our squawk boxes and uh, forming broad opinions about the world based on that. Sure. And, then, and also a and ton then screaming people, at each other. A ton of people have died from COVID, though. I yeah, think yeah, there yeah. are people who, I mean, to your point, sure, it's an anecdote, but like, you know, there's people who have lost multiple loved ones to COVID. Mm -hmm. They think it's a very, very, very big deal. And it's very important that people treat it as such. Mm -hmm. And and then the question is, obviously, you know, it, it goes without saying that that people within the context of their own lives, we want to be able to make as many decisions without government interference as possible. Now, when does the government interfere? And to me, it's not for a disease with the cur with this death rate, with this risk rate, um, that's that's not where I draw the line. And if other people do, I'd prefer that that be the conversation and that we could then look at comps, meaning we could then be like, okay, like if COVID is this dangerous and you're this concerned and the flu is one-tenth as dangerous or whatever, like can we take one-tenth of those measures for the flu? Well, why not? You know what I mean? All right, if you know what I mean? And, and, and start to form some principled decision-making based on risk of death and not just reacting to one thing that you are frequently told is is dangerous um but so yeah for in this particular case covid in the world that we live in i, I don't think that state government should be telling private businesses that they must screen for vaccines nor that they can't screen for vaccines mm -hmm. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.